Greetings and welcome to a new video about another example of a synchronous motor. This will be your example number three. In this example I will discuss the effect of a power factor for a synchronous motor. So we have the following situation. The problem is we have a 1 milli volt amperes 11 kilowatts RMS 60 Hz 3 phase star connected synchronous motor it has a per phase state resistance of 4 ohms and also a stator reactance of 50 ohms what we like to calculate is the back emf generated by this motor when it is fully loaded and it has a power factor of 1 in the second case it has a power factor of 0 0.9 lagging and in the third case it has a power factor of 0 0.9 leading so we will have three cases of the power factor for this motor when it is fully loaded so we would like to also then calculate the generated back emf okay let's, so let's look at our solutions before we move on we always use our model and this is the model we will use for the synchronous motor so using again the Kirchhoff voltage law to develop the voltage equation here so what we have is then the phase voltage equal to the voltage across these two elements plus the generated back emf now since we are of course interested in the back emf we can isolate the back emf using the following step so the back emf is equal to the phase voltage minus the voltage drop across these two elements which is in the state resistance and also the state of reactance now we know that this is of course uh, impedance so we can also call it a zs so we can then write the equation like that okay now for a star connected motor the phase voltage will be of course the line voltage over square root of three so we have eleven thousand volts rms so we divide it by the square root of three and you will have this 6351 volts rms as a phase voltage now we can then convert this to the pole representation having the magnitude and also the phase we have the reference the phase voltage so we take that as zero degrees okay from the three phase apparent power we already have given the phase current can then be calculated now the apparent power for three phase is then three times the phase voltage times the phase current so we know or the stator current which is actually flown here per phase so we can then rewrite this in order to calculate the phase current now we have one me mega volts ampere so we have then 10 to the power 6 over three times what we have just calculated for our phase voltage then we have 52.5 amperes and this is the magnitude of that current flowing here per phase okay so the per phase stator impedance we already said that we can of course take these two elements and then call it z of s that is then the series combination of the rs and the reactance of this inductor so it is then five plus j50 in order to calculate that in a different form we, all, we can also have it in the polar representation having the magnitude and also the phase using this formula now if you now just substitute the given values you will have this and it will be 50.2 ohms with a phase orientation of 85 degrees so we will use this later on in our calculations now first start with the question a which is in the power factor of one so the unity power factor now if this is the unity power factor and the general formula for the power factor when we consider only one frequency is given by this expression which is in the cosine of the angle and this angle is associated with the angle of the current of this phase current so we have then the theta one is in the arc cosine of that uh, power factor now we know that then the power factor is one so that will result in zero degrees okay that means then the following our stator current for this condition one the first case is then 52.5 ampere with a phase orientation of 
zero degrees because the amplitude was already calculated for the phase current we also know the orientation of the or the angle by using the power factor now we can use this formula what we have developed using the Kirchhoff voltage law in order to calculate the back emf generated so that will be then this formula and we just substitute the phase voltage minus the current times the impedance and impedance is given here and the current is shown here for this condition okay now we just multiply these two so what you do in order to calculate this you just multiply the numbers so the magnitudes and you add up the phases then this will result if i now want of course to add these two polar representation i can convert that to rectangle representation you can see what i did so you take the cosine of the angle and also the sine of the angle with the j and you multiply it by the amplitude you do that similar form here and if you now work this out and then combine the real and imaginary parts you will have this rectangular representation for our back emf this can be of course then converted to the polar representation and also the associated phase you will have this so 6661 volts with a phase orientation of 23.2 degrees so how does the diagram look like so let's also look at the diagram this is a diagram where you see the phase voltage the phase current for the first case we have also the angle which is then actually this angle which is also called the torque angle so let's place the numbers one by one we have now this voltage phase voltage that has a length or the amplitude of 6351 volts now we know also know the current which has which is then 52.5 amperes the generated back emf here was 6661 volts you can see it is larger than the phase voltage because this is a power factor of one this is over a unity power factor you will have a larger generated back emf for the synchronous motor we also know that we lose some power here so that will be then also shown here and this is then 2636 volts and that is later on shown here and again we have torque angle which is then this one and this is then the voltage what we have across these two elements or the impedance okay that's for the first case where the power factor is unity now moving on to the power factor of 0 0.9 lagging and we do the similar calculation so we have again the necessary information here what we do again going to the power factor formula and then in this case the second case so theta 2 you just substitute the 0 0.9 you will get 26 degrees lagging and that means since this is lagging this will be a minus so you will have a negative phase so our current the phase current will have the same amplitude but the phase will be minus 26 degrees because it is lagging okay then we have again using this formula what we have developed using Kirchhoff voltage law in order to calculate the generate, generated back emf for the second case again use use the phase voltage the phase current and also the impedance the impedance stays the same but the phase current is has changed only by its phase so we have the magnitude of the phase current still the same as 52.5 amperes so if i can do the same operation as we did in the power factor of one just calculate by multiplying the magnitudes and also add the phases so minus 26 degrees plus fifth plus 85 you will have then 59 degrees if i now work it out using the rectangular forms that is of course easier to add and subtract i will have then the following result by combining the real and the imaginary parts and converting this to the polar representation you will have then this result which is then 5400 80 volts with a phase orientation of minus 24.3 degrees if i now again draw a diagram for this situation you can again see several uh, arrows so this is then again the phase voltage again the same value and we also have the phase current and you can see this is now in this direction which is which is of course now lagging so 
this is then the minus 26 degrees so it is then a negative phase so the generator back EMF is now smaller for lagging. So for power factor which is lagging, you will have a smaller generated back EMF than your phase voltage. And the associated torque angle is the minus 24.3 degrees, which is also shown here. Now we also lose some power across these two elements. So that is also shown here, but it's still the same. So it is 26, 2,636 volts. Okay, that's for the second case. Now moving on to the third and the final case, which is then the 0 0.9 leading for the power factor. Again, we use the same information because nothing is changing, only the phase flow change using again this formula for the power factor. So you can move on and the specific case for the theta, theta three, you just substitute the 0 0.9 here, but then we have leading a leading means for the current phase a plus so we have a positive phase exact same procedure as we did in the question b but then a plus sign here so again using the formula here for the back emf you just substitute the values you will now have a phase of 111 degrees for this these two uh, combination okay again compare converting that to the rectangle form and add, the, add them up the real and imaginary parts you will have the result shown here and if i now convert this to the polar representation i have a 7700 volts with a phase orientation of minus 18.6 volts for my back emf okay now we have also the diagram for this case we have again our arrow for the phase voltage which is exact same as before and we have our current again exact same as before now the phase is in this case positive so it is then plus 26 degrees but the torque angle here will be then this one and the associated generated back emf is now also in the leading case larger than the phase voltage and that's shown here 7700 and the torque angle is here we also lose some voltage, so that's across this impedance, and that's also shown here in the exact same as in the previous two cases, 2,636 volts. Okay, now that concludes actually the three operations for these three cases. Now let's then also summarize the results. So what we have is a power factor, PF, for the per phase, because we have just used the per phase model, of the synchronous model so we also calculate per phase back emf now for the unity case we have this result for the 0 0.9 lagging this was the result and for the 0 0.9 leading we had this result so you can see for the unity and for the leading power factor the back generated back emf is larger than the phase voltage because the phase voltage was smaller than the value we have here but for the lagging you will have a smaller back EMF voltage per phase. So power factor is one, power factor 0 0.9 lagging and also the power factor 0 0.9 leading and these were the diagrams we have just discussed. And this is then a summary of the complete situation. You can see that this arrow is indeed smaller than that arrow, but this arrow looks like smaller but it's actually larger than that one. And you can also see that this is longer than this case so for leading and for the unity power factor you will always have the back emf voltage is larger than the phase voltage all right this is then for this example where we discuss in detail the effect of the power factor on our generated back emf in a synchronous motor if you have any questions about this exercise please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible and don't forget to like and share this video so that we can reach more people for this interesting topic. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time and take care.